We're talking the vice presidential debates, discrimination within the LGBT community, and the disillusionment of finding Prince Charming. Gay Weekly Roundtable starts now. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Gorgeous. <laughs> A gorgeous way to start the day. Welcome, everybody, to Gay Weekly Roundtable, the show where we're breaking down all the biggest news stories and pop culture stories affecting the LGBT community. We are your hosts. I am Adam Salandra. You can find me on Instagram and other social, at Adam Salandra. Oh, is it me? Yeah. Oh, hi. We're going to go high. with the American oh, way. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> hi, it's me, Tony Moore, and you can find me on all social media platforms, at Lounging with Tony. Hi, I'm Yell. You can find me everywhere at Yell Teagle. That's Y A E L T Y G I E L. And I'm live in the chat, hopefully, if it loads. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Blake McIver, and you can find me everywhere at Blake McIver. And we have a super special guest with us comedian, author, actor, many hyphenates, I'm sure that I'm missing, Jeffrey Self. Hi. Hi. Which, which camera do I look into? Is I, this my camera? Yes. yes. This yes. is yes. the weirdest room. <laughs> There's <laughs> cameras literally <laughs> everywhere. It's like, everywhere. It's like my bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're used to it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. You probably haven't heard, because it's super under the radar, but it mm -hmm. is an election season. What? No. Really? Yeah, exactly. And I had no idea. The wow. debates. You might not have. No, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, but did you, did you watch the debates, Blake? Yes, I, I watched. <sighs> honestly thought this is going to be more boring. The only thing more boring I could think of is any sporting event of yeah. any kind. Right. So right. I was not really into it, but how did it go? Well, it was the, you know, it was supposed to be the nice guys debate, the vice presidential debate. And we, right. were, we were looking towards <laughs> a, what was to be a boring evening right. of television that turned out to be not boring at all. In fact, I wish it had been a little more boring. Um, but the thing that struck me the most, and, and a lot of news outlets have covered it this week, that there was a glaring uh, misstep in the question process, specifically um, because of what the context of our show is. Um, they didn't ask Mike Pence a darn thing about his horrible record on anti-LGBT um, voting, I mean, voting record and this, this bill, this Indiana State Bill, um, Religious Freedom Restoration Act is the name of it. Um, and the, the, the supporters of it have said, it's a shield, not a sword. Oh. That was their, you know, the, how, how, yeah, how they always how, make it sound beautiful. How beautifully <laughs> Christian of them, yeah. It's that, you know, it's For that sort of truth that'll stab you in the back <laughs> if you're gay. For some reason, um, as soon as you said that, I pictured Pete's dragon. I have no <laughs> idea why well, that that's came up. Interesting. If, yeah. only, if only it was that. Yeah, I don't know. Can beautiful. you tell us about this? Well, basically, it's it is a discrimination law. Yeah. Um, it protects religious businesses and individuals from being able to discriminate based on their religion. Um, and it's it's ridiculous, and it's it's one of the worst. Actually, the fr I, I went I actually went through and read the whole thing. <laughs> it took me forever. Oh, well, it sounds but like it did. The the actual verbiage used is some of the most inflammatory. If you sort of know the keywords, you know it doesn't come right out and say like and gay people shall perish. But it, you know <laughs> it, it protects bigots is right. really what it protects. Right. Is this the the Hobby Lobby? Bill? It is and it is reactionary to the Hobby Lobby decision. Okay. So that was that court case was very influential okay. in getting this passed. And Mike Pence is for it 100%, and he still stands by it. Um, you know, a lot of Republicans have talked about how Trump is not an ultra conservative, uh, as you know it has been described in the past. But the problem is he's got this man standing next to him that is one of the most anti-LGBT politicians that we have in our country right now. So the thought of him being a breath away from the presidency is frightening. Right. So we can't forget that, and but it, was, it wasn't talked about in the debate. Right. Um, and it was it's an it's an issue that he has been. It's kind of the only reason in the past year that he's been in the national spotlight is because of his anti-gay right. tirades. He's even made horrible claims about like, oh, I'm going to take funds from uh, HIV/AIDS and give them over to uh, conversion therapy. Like, I mean, uh. he says <laughs> he says insane yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, it's intense. It's not like uh, something that the Democrats are like creating to make him sound bad. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. And and I mean, he went so far in the debate as to even like quote scripture in the most patronizing way at Tim Kaine. It was just, it was terrible. Like it was just. Oh right, they did. Well they he, both, well they both started quoting scripture. They both did start <laughs> quoting scripture. <laughs> which was the minute I was like, I, is there a real housewife? Right, right exactly. Now? There is not. It's an emergency. Yeah. You would have taken Miami at yeah. that point. At that point I would have, exactly. I would have taken gallery girls. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. yeah, and Tim Kaine today on CNN was asked, like, why didn't he? And he was like, oh, well, the moderator didn't just, just didn't ask about it. I wonder why they oh. didn't ask. It's it is so weird that they didn't weird. ask. It is but weird. But I don't know why he didn't take that opportunity to at least jump on. Yeah. It. Though I heard, I, I knew, honestly, nothing of Tim Kaine before this. Obviously, I, I didn't either because yeah. I'm not a very nor am I. But I, I, people are commenting that he wasn't really that for LGBT rights until recently, right? Um, so, so which maybe has been he's a criticism. I mean, feigning them, perhaps. I mean, the I point know. was everything that Tim Kaine said was great. He just didn't do it in the most suave way. Right. And I Pence that has that awful like evangelical pastor, like I'm just gonna yeah, yeah. tell you yeah. why <laughs> Jesus is gonna save you. And so that's why everyone thought that he won. Right. He didn't. Right. At the content of everything Pence said was completely wretched. It was, Tim had great things to say, yeah. Mike had terrible things to say, he just said it with panache. Right. So therefore he won. Well, hey, Trump could use a little panache on his, <laughs> That's uh, true. Wrong. On his side. Yeah. So, well, know, yeah, not that I want that. But. <laughs> we'll well, have I, to wait till Sunday night and see what the next uh, presidential debate, how that yes. goes and how that, that shakes well, that down. I think that will come up there because you I agree. Our, our girl Anderson Cooper is moderating. Oh, Amen. Is yes. Yes. Good. This is his. So he will go all in, I hope. Some things to say. Yes, yeah. and Trump will. Uh, Trump already came out being like, "I don't think Anderson should be the moderator. Really? He can't be fair." And it's like, okay, do we have to make excuses right. so so quickly? Well, maybe I'll watch that one. Yeah, <laughs> you I'll never know. And on Sunday, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sunday night in CNN. Did you watch the first presidential debate? No. I watched that one. I'm, kind of, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bad. I know. I should That's probably okay. like. I think because there's. As long as you vote. Yes, I, I do plan on voting, thing. but I, I think there's just so much talk about this uh, political uh, year or election year that I just like. I, I rather live in my own bubble of like. Ooh, when is the new season of Real Housewives of Atlanta no, I totally coming get on? That. I totally get that. And yeah. that's true. In, 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 in November quite 9th. a few weeks. <laughs> Super um, the no, day after the election. But I, yeah. I think that's Good. I think that's totally okay. As yeah. long as you're like making sure as far as like not just the presidential vote, but like when you go and vote for your local laws and your state laws, like mm -hmm. that you're actually up to date. Because that's where I'm like so clueless. Oh yeah. But yeah. like really being up to date on that stuff. I, like, that's yeah. so important. Yep. I just got a big old book in the mail that Mine e too. every year I'd be like, well that's not happening. And this year I no. Yeah. Yeah. I will read through it and yep. I'm going to find out what needs to happen. I don't happen. know if I'll read through it, but I'll definitely yeah. Google somebody who I trust and well, go with the list they put well, together. And usually the, LA, <laughs> usually the LA <laughs> Times <laughs> puts out a really comprehensive list of like what oh, the propositions mean and like what your vote means. See, oh, I like that. <laughs> I, I like when the newspaper just like breaks it down for me. Like I can tune everything out right now, but then I can have that time to myself mm -hmm. to look at everything and go, okay, I got it. Now I know how to vote. Totally. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have a friend who I just sit on the phone with and we go one by one and I go, what does this one mean? Yeah. And she like explains it to <laughs> me good. and then explains how it affects me. Yeah. And I go, well, this one doesn't affect me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's is a this, good phrase. Is this Rachel like Maddow long... doing this for you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Our dear Our friend, Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. That sounds like a long that. conversation. <laughs> Yeah, um, but she, my friend loves it. She's real oh. political. You know Rachel. Yeah, she does. She can <laughs> talk for hours about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she does. Well, okay, so I'm switching gears to something lighter, but yes. just as important, Finding Prince Charming. Uh, yes. And, oh, boy, am I glad you're here for this. But sure. let me explain first what's happening. Um, it's happening. The show is <laughs> yes, a it's Bachelor, happening. the first of its kind. Yes. Um, and it's been great in, in terms of, I mean, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But someone on the show finding Prince Charming himself, Robert Sepulveda Jr. I think he didn't realize he's on a reality show because uh, yeah. girls getting very upset about yes. uh, people having opinions about him and the show, which mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how he didn't think that was going to happen. But so yeah. first he said he was going to sue people that were commenting on Twitter things against him. Does yes. he know how Twitter works? Yeah. That, it, does he know how 2016 works? No. Or, or no. The, it's no. very, it's crazy to me. He, um... He doesn't really have a personality for the most part. If no. you're watching, um, he's handsome. Though. I was gonna say, who well, needs him to talk? I'll, I'll say, handsome. I will say though. I at first thought he was handsome, but the more and more I watch him, I find him. I don't know if he's withering away as every week goes by, <laughs> but I find him less and less attractive. But I also, I think we're getting to see yeah. his personality or lack thereof more exactly. so every week, and it's yeah. just like so ugly. The funny <laughs> thing is, a lot of the people that I know that comment on him are even fans of the show. Oh, yeah. um, uh, comedian Jimmy Fallon just did a video where he like plugged himself into it. Yep. Uh, it was really funny. He wasn't making fun 
fun of Robert specifically. At all. He was blocked by Robert yeah. on Twitter, how he found it. But, Jeffrey, you... And I'm also now blocked, so I yes. didn't realize. But until you write recaps uh -oh. about... Well, I, yeah, I write recaps of the show for Vulture. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I have obviously written about Robert. Um, but I never am, like, that mean. But it's also uh, funny. Right. Um, but I get it. It hurts his feelings. I got, like, a very much, like, a standard... I feel like it was, like, a pre-written message that was going out to anyone who's written about him. That was like, why are you so hateful? Why are you so cruel? You use your words to, to set us back. This says a lot about you. Very, very good message. You could go on my Instagram <laughs> to see it, uh, at Jeffrey Self. And then I wrote a message back that, uh, at, uh, that's also on my Instagram, just being like, you know, that the, you, you are on a reality show, babe. Like, truly, like, embrace it, enjoy it. Like, that's what I don't understand is that, like, uh, the, also, there's a world of these like of gay people on Twitter and stuff who who are like this show is so bad for gay culture yeah. and setting us back because it's displaying terrible versions of gay people. But these are the same people who are watching the Real Housewives, who are watching the Bachelor. Right. And mm -hmm. if it's a woman, they're okay with right. laughing and showing mm -hmm. oh because she's crazy. Oh my God, I love this crazy person. But the minute it's another gay person, it all of a sudden becomes this thing for them. And I just think it speaks volumes about gay people towards women. Well, totally. Being one of the people here at After Buzz TV that does a recap of Finding <laughs> Prince Charming every Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Slip um, that in. Right. Yes. Um, my, one of my co-hosts was blocked by Robert <laughs> as well. Yes, I feel like by the way, I don't, and, I've never followed him. I've never tweeted him. I didn't yeah. even know he was you, on Twitter. Him. Yeah, he did, I Wild. guess. That's, well, that's super weird. I'm start tweeting at him. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's blocked me. I think I'm still He's good. blocking us all as we speak. <laughs> Maybe. I, but I, sure. I, I do feel like this. I was very happy to see that finally there was like a gay version mm -hmm. of The Bachelor. Because we all, you know, yeah. as gay people are looking for our Prince Charming. Um, what I have found is that there are so many people speaking so negatively about the show. That is kind of like, well, you know... Why would, you know, networks take a chance on any other kind of gay format if, like, we already just, like, roll our eyes at the exactly. thought of, like, having it? You know what I mean? Like, right. just take it as sheer... Uh, something that they're trying, something that they're trying to progress forward. They're doing the, they're doing the same characters really that they do on any other All reality shows. shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and so you it, have the drunk mess, you yes. have the, per, the the sober grounded person. Yes. You know, you have all the archetypes from every reality show. Let's yes. embrace that. But I mean, it is doing well. That's the yeah. thing. It's, it it's is rating. doing well. The ratings keep going up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for that network, you know, it's it's. I mean, I think like if two people are watching, it's probably good ratings for them. But like, <laughs> it's you know, but like, but it's it's. I mean, it's good. I, and uh, I think that uh, I think I actually know who gets kicked off tonight. And I, I can tell you. But I I know. Well, no, I, no spoilers. And I also know. I also know who the final three are. You do <gasps> no, yeah. spoilers. no spoilers. Are you ready? Because someone told me who's on the show, and I don't want to get them in trouble. Oh, though, <laughs> but oh, they those are people on the will show. talk. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, those suitors yeah. will talk. Um, well, yeah. Lawrence in the chat says Lance Bass is doing a great job as host. Yeah, that is a unanimous agreement. He is hosting it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, he's good. No, he's good. No, he's good. Sorry, that was bitchy. He is. Hosting. No, he's he's great. I mean, I actually like that Lance Bass is 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 doing it because he yeah. he is taking it fully seriously. He's doing yes, it straight. He he's not making mm -hmm. fun of anybody. Mm -hmm. He's not rolling his eyes at the idea of it. And I think that's what the show needs. If it was somebody like like the whole time being like this is ridiculous and right. being sassy to be. these guys, it would be it would be annoying. Yeah. But like yeah. he takes it seriously and. Uh, I, I think yeah, I like him. Very Chris uh, Harrison, Harrison is that whatever S. that guy is. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Him, I mean, of guy. course, I wish it was Constant Zimmer hosting Finding Prince uh, Charming. Uh, <laughs> what can we do? But we can't have it all. <laughs> no vote for uh, uh, Ross Matthews. I would. I would I, enjoy but that. I would I enjoy would Ross Matthews. Fun. But at the end of the day, as well, though, he's a comedian, so he yeah. doesn't have to be funny. I yeah, like, he. I like Lance Lance's... not having to be funny. Like yeah. he's not funny. He's just there to host. So he's just come in, tell us what we're doing yeah. today, how we're going to get the dates, uh, and then you go on to your Prince Charming. Let's home. imagine yeah. Robert. And that's the thing. He's not like mugging. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. he's he keeps it so well, yeah, even that's, keel. Yeah, that's such a good point too. It's like if Robert had to like do those one on ones with like a Ross Matthews, he would just not be. He would come out fresh. And like I think over. Overall, I mean, everyone goes on social media to make fun, sure. but overall, things are getting extremely out of hand, especially on shows like Drag Race, people sending death threats because they're fans or whatever. Oh. I, of course, think all that is insane and ridiculous. Yeah. However, I don't understand 
applying to be on a reality TV show and then being like, why does everyone have opinions on me? It's yeah. interesting though, my only counter to that is like, it hits people's personalities differently um, mm -hmm. at, at every course. time and like, it's, you can't prepare yourself for it. You can say it all day long. Like people are going to say terrible things about you on the internet and then until it happens, it's like, that's true. Oh no no! I would be you know. devastated. And I only but say I would, that. I only I'm, counter that because people have been saying terrible things about me on the internet since the internet was invented. <laughs> but literally by Al Gore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you, and you don't. You can't. It's a weird, violated kind of. So I don't. I, you know. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I can understand that this is crazy. It's got to be crazy it, for him. Yeah. It's for for everybody. Yeah. I would assume yeah. it would be really really intense. I yeah. don't think he shouldn't be upset. I just don't. He just seems surprised. That's the only thing. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. right. well, I. Which is surprising. Well, I, mean, I can, <laughs> I can kind of see that. I mean, think about what we do here at AfterBuzz. Like, we're like, yay, we did a great show. And then you go on YouTube and you're like, oh, yeah. you're like what? Oh. And then you like get in your feelings like, I'm going to tell this little 13 year old who's right. sitting in somewhere, kidding? like, blah, blah, blah. I get such negative things that I screenshot them and I share them with the world. <laughs> I yeah, I do appreciate it. Making, people, making totally. people talk. Making people talk. I don't love it. I definitely share it oh, and yeah. screen grab it. it. But it's right. like to like try to make myself feel better. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's never been. Surprise. Yeah, yeah. It's never, yeah, it's like, never no. been surprised. I'm putting yeah. myself out into the public. Yeah, this right. is unfortunate. Never been right. shocked by it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, great. Speaking of yeah. putting yourself out there, you have a oh, story. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, I came across this video uh, that Davey Wavy has done. He's doing this series called Lost Boy Tour, and uh, it was titled Fat and Gay. And uh, he talks to a guy in, oh, in Amsterdam. Oh, I think his name is... Martijun or something like that. It's like it was. It I might just be Martin, but he's sweet. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but he uh, he was uh, describing uh, his encounter on Grinder, where uh, a guy basically said, um, "Look at look at you." Wait, no, I'm sorry. Let me say it the right way. Um, he said a guy sent him a message that said, look at your profile picture, then look at my profile uh, picture again, and then decide if you really think it was a good idea to send me a message. Oh, oh my God. Well, that's, a miserable, that's a miserable person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, indeed. And it, it okay. only be, it's only because, like, you know, he, you know, He's a little heavy set, which uh, which to me it was like you know average. What's that like? Yeah. <laughs> um, What's that like, guys? But <laughs> let me tell you, it is always full of late night munchies on my end. That's what that's how I feel. Um, but <laughs> but um, you know he's ju he just talks about how he just felt like insecure and you know uh, until he found his niche, which were uh, chasers who found who are more accepting and what a chaser is. In case you don't know, uh, is you a, mean a chubby chaser? No, just chaser. Um, <laughs> Because it's a person who seeks out individuals because of the, because of a specific characteristic mm. like chubbiness. Mm. Yeah, but that could be a lot of. It can be anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chocolate chaser. Yeah. 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 Chocolate chaser. It, yeah. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> what it yeah what it's it's fetishizing a person's type. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Any physical, physical type or yeah. whatever. And for me, like, I, it kind of resonated with me uh, a lot because I do feel like in our community, we look at each other and we point out all the negative things um, on, on the surface, just like, you know, what we look like. But then we look at the world and say, accept us for who we are. Well, how can the world accept us for who we are when we don't accept each other for who we are? Totally. You know, there have been so many times where I've been told, oh, you're cute for a black guy and I'm like I don't understand I, what that means I like not believe it. am I mm -mm. can I just be a cute guy yeah like right. you know and how do you respond to that just don't, um, don't say anything well I, I smile and I say thank you <laughs> yeah. um, because there was a compliment in there, <laughs> in there somewhere. somewhere I only heard a compliment um, yes there was a compliment <laughs> there somewhere but but it, it makes you look at the person differently it makes you look That's at true. them like well, yeah, okay, what are the quantifiers you in your, yeah. Yeah, and and I feel like within our community, especially when it comes to, you know, dating and, and what we're into and things like that, there's this huge checklist of, like, what you have to look like and what you have to be. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people are missing their blessings when they overlook people because of one characteristic that could possibly be changed mm -hmm. yeah, if definitely. they wanted it to be changed. What's interesting about this, though, is I saw this being covered in a lot of the comments at first were like, oh, this is great someone's speaking out because there's the whole no fats, no femmes, big issue on Grindr. Mm -hmm. But then people started coming for Martijin mm -hmm. uh, because he said chaser and they were like, well, that's a label and you're glorifying these people who only want you because you're overweight. So once again, everyone loses. In this <laughs> there is no way to lose, yeah. there's no way to win on the internet. There no. really is. No, there literally is not. Um, but at least this guy was telling his story and saying he was more comfortable and it's just, 
um, this sort of, I find, unacceptable and kind of gross behavior is at least being called out more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They referenced it on this past season of Drag Race. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being talked about in these stories. So hopefully, because it's a lack of, if you even have the thought, oh, you're cute for a black guy, first of all, that's insane. Mm -hmm. But then you don't have the self-awareness to realize, but I should never say such a thing. Right. 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 That, you have, right. There's an issue that you need to look <laughs> well, in that, more. That, yeah. that does, that makes me say, what is your worldview? Exactly. Like, what is, what yeah. is going perfect on in your, in your brain? Yeah. What is beautiful in your brain? Like, what does that look like? Right. And it probably doesn't look good in the mirror yeah. either well, exactly. is the root problem, exactly. I would imagine. Were you guys ever in insecure at all about like how you look? Uh, yes, thank you for looking directly no, at I was, me. No, well. I, was, I, was, I did a look at everyone. He looked at me as well, but no. I just immediately <laughs> shook, shook, shook my head down. No, no. So, yeah, for, for a long time, I had a lot of self-esteem issues. Mm. Um, I, growing up, my best friend was a straight size model, like literally a straight size model. Mm -hmm. I did photo shoots and I'd go with her and... Um, that's really tough to do as a big girl. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I stopped looking at her and I started looking at myself and realized that I'm sexy as f Hello, um, good hello yeah. someone. Hello. So uh, I got over it. But yeah. I do, I mean, I do a lot of stuff in body positivity and, and on the internet about that especially. Um, and one of the things that I try to remind people and what I would say to the person who is this rude to our good friend Martigen, um, <laughs> I would say, you don't know his story. Yeah. Like, you don't know what's going on. Maybe he's actually a very, uh, you know, thin person and happens to currently have some sort of medical condition or is taking medication that made him bloat. Like, you don't know what's going on in this person's life. Yeah. But, so, and it's none of your business. Right. Yeah. Or just maybe he's always been this way and you're not into it and that's the end of this conversation. What do you need to make him feel bad for? Right, but it comes right. back to your own right. insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. Which I've, I've definitely, I, I mean, has anyone here not felt insecure about how they looked? I, mean, I don't oh, anymore. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, yeah. obviously, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it constantly, and I think having these, these phones that we have in our pockets that are or in our hands if you're me at all times mm -hmm. it, the, the refreshing Instagram and seeing all these people that you follow on right. Instagram that are attractive yeah. <laughs> or when you go to the explore feature and you're, and you're looking for something for new <laughs> yeah. and it's rough it's rough it's and it's, it's obviously I mean it's no way to come away from it without even if it's being insecure about not just the, your, your the way you're not looking like somebody but like oh this person got this great job or this person lives in this right. house, this right. person mm -hmm. is in Ibiza again, you know? Like, it's, yeah. Yeah. Everyone was in Ibiza <laughs> yeah. for like the past six months. Yeah, yeah. Ibiza has like, yeah. yeah. been really popular lately. <laughs> really? It's yeah. Ibiza, guys? Oh, is it? Ibiza. Is it really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's right, it is Ibiza. Like Ibiza. Ibiza. Well, now I've offended someone. Yeah, uh, yeah. Been, there, we did it again. I, mean, I just want to go back to the, the fetishization of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because I had uh, I did an interview with Whitney Waythor, who has that show, My Big Fat Fabulous Life on TLC. Mm -hmm. um, and she and I discussed a lot about Chubby Chaser specifically um, and the, the fetishization of fatties and like this idea that people are super turned on by fatties or feeders, people who really enjoy feeding uh, people. And um, it's sorry, no, it's, that's so it's like a it's thing. Um, and like I, I don't judge uh, people's fetishes like you do you and enjoy as long as everyone's consenting but like personally I won't date someone who only dates fatties like that's an issue that I have because that tells me that you don't care about mm. me you the person yeah. yeah I think that's fair yeah thank you I think I agree. that's as it should be. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, right. It's nothing against your own yeah. personal right. fat, you know, yeah. but it's, you it, do. it can't be the reason. Yeah. Yeah. I need to see a spectrum of people that you like, you know, and I don't want to feel like you are just into just black guys, yeah. you know. I need to see that you have some sort of like, you know, spectrum. Mm -hmm. and or or we're, and we're sprinkled or like in you there. for you. I yes. Mean, yeah. Because yeah. there's a whole lot of me that you can like. <laughs> <laughs> that said, if you want to feed me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm totally down with being fed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right? all for that. Yeah. <laughs> don't mind if I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but feeding someone, not for me. No. Um, all right, well. Yeah, well, I mean, I think at the end of the day, like, you know, people just need to learn to, it's, it sounds cheesy, but, you know, love yourself. You yeah. know, and I think we all go through that period where we feel very insecure about uh, how we look because, you know, we're not as fit as or don't look, you know, as good at, or, you know, however we, you know, look at and view other people. And I think you just have to look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm good. I like me. And if you don't like me, then forget you. 
forget you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Speaking of discrimination within the LGBT community, because how are we going to get others to accept us when we can't accept ourselves? Mm-hmm. There's a ton. Uh, a lot of people don't really uh, support the bisec, the B in the LGBT, mm-hmm. right. thinking it's fake and whatnot. Um, and last week was Bisexuality Week, so mm-hmm. there was emphasis on that. Happy it's a very busy week. week. Hey. Very busy Happy week, week, week for all yeah. of us. Yeah. 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 I was busy. But, <laughs> but, Yale, you found something out that I did. in some parts of the world, that's not the case. Yeah, so apparently in the UK, um, the stats show that <laughs> You're people... You're so excited. I'm so excited <laughs> that people identify more as bisexual or pansexual than they do as gay or lesbian. Can I ask a question? This yes. and this is stupid. What is the difference between bisexual and pansexual? Do you okay. know? I Does do. anyone this know? Is a good, this is a great question. Great question. I have no idea. Um, so bisexual is someone who is attracted to men and women. Pansexual opens that up to trans folks. Oh, okay. And then there's polysexual. The difference between pan and poly. I know. <laughs> the difference between pan and poly is pan means you're open to um, any genders on the spectrum, and poly means you're open to all genders on the spectrum. So that meaning, pan is you fall in love with the person and- For it, like their personality. Like, for their personality. Like how they are. Yeah, and Polly would be someone who would fall in love with any gender. And is that also, a, is Polly also someone who would potentially be in a relationship with more than one person? So that would be polyamory, Amory, which yeah. is not necessarily the same thing as polysexual. Okay, wow. Oh, I know. Oh my a gosh. Yeah. A lot of terms. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of dictionary. Yeah. I mean, but it's, yeah. it's it's good to know these terms because it is it is like embarrassing when I, I have friends who identify as different things and and when they say the words and I'm like, uh-huh, that's it, yes. <laughs> Rights yeah. for all. But I, and I don't know what, what the hell I'm saying. I'm Page. Yeah. But this increase seems to be, I I want to say, and I think I read it somewhere and I lost it, that um, it seems a lot of people are seeing more representation of bi and pansexual people. For example, Miley Cyrus, Evan oh, Rachel Wood, Anna mm-hmm. Paquin, um, Bella Thorne recently, Demi Lovato. So there are a lot of women. No, Aubrey Plaza. Didn't she just yeah, say she something did. about that? Mm-hmm. All of these really good looking women. <laughs> <laughs> Any men. We need more re- um, men. Yes, and I lost them. There's a guy, and <laughs> I don't know how he says his last name, but he's on Broadway. Maybe you guys know Andy Mantis. Andy Mantis. Yeah. Mantis. Uh, Identifies yes. and he's as married bi. to a man. So for anyone who thinks, oh, he's just afraid to come fully out, I don't think he is. He's happily married to a man. Right. Mm. Um, but yeah, of course, it starts with women because of that, for whatever reason, is more socially. Women acceptable. are more comfortable. I, because I've society is more evolved. To be, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I think yeah. also society is more accepting of women. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I, in some ways, in some ways, <laughs> yeah. well, well, it was same women with, together. Yeah, sexuality, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, sexuality with, yeah, yeah. spectrum. Yeah. I think is. Um, but I, it makes me wonder. What do you? How do you all feel about the Kinsey scale? We're it, all familiar with the yeah. scale and where everyone stands on it. What is the Kinsey scale? So, uh, Doctor Kinsey, <laughs> forgot his first name. Great movie with Liam Neeson. Uh, Liam Neeson. Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like it's his face that comes into my head when you say <laughs> Dr. Kinsey. Um, so he discussed that everyone is on a spectrum of zero to six, uh-huh. um, and I don't remember which side is which. But one is. I like, always forget which yeah. which so, is the gay side and which is the straight. Side. I never have to remember because I'm at three. So um, <laughs> you're in the middle. Yeah, a zero. Let's say is you're a hundred percent heterosexual and six is 100% homosexual and mm. everyone is somewhere on the scale and there are rarely people who are zero or six. Yeah. Yeah. But that's it must take his... some digging to figure that out for, for people that would I must be alive. <laughs> You're like, I'm as close as you could possibly be. I'm as be. close to that spectrum as yeah. Yeah. I'm 5.9. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty secure, I feel pretty nine, nine, secure nine, at nine. six over here. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I may be one of the few. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's great. I mean, I, now I'm about to give you a stat that I don't know the actual stat. But sure. Anyway, That's always yeah, a great yeah. idea. <laughs> to the world. Allegedly. Gener- right. Generation Z, which is below millennials, they're coming up. Oh, God. oh I, Lord. I, I know. Uh, they are, aside from being the most accepting, less than 50% identify as heterosexual. Oh, wow. That's wow. Cool. It's, it's okay. insane. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a lot of people. I mean, there's this whole thing about... Thing. I make it sound like it's this theory that some stranger came up with in his basement. But like, we're all generally on a fluid scale of movement. I mean, maybe it's just me who's like, what ifs? Everybody's You're very good. flexible, though. Oh, <laughs> very <laughs> fluid, yes. Um, but uh, I just, this whole, the younger generations, I think they see, wait, I don't have to, I don't have to like 
choose anything, yeah. any label of any sort. I'm just going to enjoy life and meet people. And I feel like I was born a little early. I should be a generation Z. Z. Are, because yeah. it really is. I mean, I'm thrilled that everyone's open and they're bringing them up. I do see that I'm getting older, that I'm like, oh, the kids added another letter to the spectrum and I can't keep up, <laughs> yeah. which is unfortunate because I yeah. support us all. So I don't, I'm right. already becoming a grumpy old man, but they are so accepting that now even the LGBT community is like, wait, what? <laughs> now now what do we call it? Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's important for, for us <clears throat> as far as uh, millennials, I guess, uh, to keep up with that and Definitely. figure out what that is. Because I feel like I'm really behind on Same. that. Same. Oh, me too. I, I feel so far behind. Is I feel like I'm like, I remember the days where it was just gay, lesbian, and bi. Yeah. That's how old I get. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember having yep. to explain to my mother what trans meant. Yeah. And was it? Uh, but that, and I feel like you know, and like I mean, I don't know what the version of that will be in fifty years, but there will be a version of that that yes. will have evolved that much, yeah. which is exciting, and it's a really exciting. Totally, thing overall, to it's know. great, and that's great. And I hope that comes to America. Yeah, I mean, it's just a study that was done um, in the UK. If you just Google O N S Study UK, it's it was like blowing up in the news. I, well, I just feel like at the end of the day, just you know, you don't have to slap a label on everything. Just if you like somebody, like them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you want to go and on that, a date, do that. That's yeah. the thing. It's like maybe the labels. I'm like mm, rolling that's, my eyes, but the the idea, love it. No no yeah. criticism of any of that. That's that, that's what it is for me. Like when when we start labeling, and then it's like. Uh, I identify as gay, bi, pan. What's the other one? Polly. Polly. I'm an I'm an Miranda. Like, I, I get confused. I'm I like, like Omni. I'm it's like, a hotel. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, do you like I me? Like hotels. No. Okay. Well then, girl. Thank you. <laughs> then you got to go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want to ask. Like, I don't care what your label is. That, it's like, look, yeah. I don't care yeah. what your label is. Do you like me? Yeah. Can we do go to like Red this? Lobster? <laughs> okay. Well then, let's go. Well, there's Ooh, a Red Lobster. I like that. I mean. You gotta do something yeah, first before you take exactly, a red lobster. Exactly, which is why I asked if we're going to Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, all right, guys. Well, next time we're gonna start taking audience questions. Um, is this the first episode? Of this is you the are first. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for cool. blowing, blowing us. But you oh. are you all work here mm-hmm. <laughs> already doing after buzz shows for other shows. Yeah. yeah, correct. And then you all converge. Yeah, I yes. didn't know any of this. Okay. Yes. Well, we wanted to see a surprise for you, and then <laughs> still not tell you. Okay. And then you find out halfway through. Um, but anyways, to hashtag hashtag I'm old. Uh, ask G W R and dyslexic. Ask G W R with your question for us. Anything you want, but like I would love to for us to get into topics for people who don't have the access that we have to the LGBT community to say right. what was it like coming out? How does it get better? Or fun ridiculous things, of course too. We'll and we'll talk about any of it. Yeah. But uh for next time, hashtag ask G W R Some question samples may include Please. Um, what uh, what number are you on the Kinsey scale? Oh, that's yeah. right. Um, what TV characters do you most identify with? I'm a big TV fan, so what Who TV... do you most identify with? I'll just go ahead and ask you. Who's oh, your TV character? Um, Captain Jack Harkness from Doctor Who. Because oh, okay. he doesn't care mm-hmm. if you're male, female, human, or alien. Who, who played that? John Berman. Okay. I was on an episode of Torchwood. That's Ooh. really with the John yeah, Berman. That's, John, yes. that's the character. That's the same character. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He I, also... saves his, I save his life. Oh, thank God. Do you guys make out? No. I <laughs> save his life on the phone. I'm like oh. a scientist or something. <laughs> well, um, his character also uh, hits on you just by saying hello. And that's really why I think it. Oh. That's I, I love <laughs> that you're like, oh, here's what it is. And yeah. it's pretty sexual overall. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then other questions, you know, are coming out stories. Yeah. Are, uh, oh, mine's hilarious. Know. So well, things like that. Yeah. So ask GWR. Yes, Hashtag. please do. Please do. But Let us know. We have to break down Jeffrey Self. Well, not in a bad way, but like get into get into <laughs> your psyche. Break you find down. Out. Okay. Oh God. Yes. Not, not like attack no, you. No. Not trolling no. you. We have to break like, you down. Break down. you down. It's, it's like a bad before. acting class. Like, I'm really good at doing that myself. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. well, stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, but we want to talk about you. But I think, unless I'm wrong, the most recent thing that you're a part of is Jeffrey Live. Yes. Your this, own talk this show. Weird thing I'm doing. Yes. Uh, I'm doing a uh, my own talk show from my living room, all actually all over my house and in my backyard, uh, every Sunday live on Facebook uh, at noon Pacific time, 
and it's on, uh, you can go to jeffreylive.com, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y, live.com, or facebook.com backslash jeffreysell. And yeah, I have like guests on. I have, I do like a little opening in my bed and then I move to the front door and I let in the guests and then we have an interview and then we play a game in the backyard usually. It's really fun. Uh, it's, it's, uh, this is the four, this will be the fifth episode on this Sunday. It's and then uh, we're taking a break next weekend because I'm going to Desert Trip, which is a, a music festival. And then uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. Even talk show hosts need a day off. Every right? Man. You've but also, to. it's just like nice to not have to figure out who I'm going to have as a guest oh, next, yeah. <laughs> next weekend because I've, I, I luckily like was able to convince a lot of friends for the first couple episodes who are pretty famous to do it. And now I'm like in this place of like I've run out of famous friends to beg to do yeah, this. You'll so find more. So I, you're going to go find some more. I don't know what I really don't know. I was like, should I start going out? Like, is this, <laughs> is, is this like is this, what's is this what's how people to? meet people? Do I have to socialize for this? But, Tell us who some of those people were. They were big oh, amazing yeah, guests. The you've first had one was Brenda Song, uh, who was promoting uh, her show with the, she stars on with my boyfriend. Actually, this new show on CBS called Pure Genius. It's really good. You should watch it. And uh, then we had Alan Cumming, mm -hmm. uh, amazing bisexual. He, yeah, I was gonna um, say. And uh, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And then last week was Gus Kenworthy. Um, gay uh <laughs> very gay and i'm not entirely sure who this weekend is oh, yet. Keeping we, it suspense uh, no it's just uh we, we're going, <laughs> you know, we, we, it's it, more difficult than i thought yeah. Yeah. talk show from your it's living room oh, yeah. uh, all by yourself but uh it's really fun and i'm really proud it of is Yay. and i've already told you this but i'll tell y'all that the execution of the show it's shot on an iphone yeah. in a house yeah so literally something anyone in one take do, we do it in one take in one take yeah. live and it is yet so perfectly executed, I feel. Well, that's all Jake Wilson. Jake Wilson's director your director. And, and it's amazing. Little signs pop up as the uh, lower third. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love amazing. that. Yeah, I love it's really it. Fun. Yeah. Musical transitions. Yes. yes. Uh, a sidekick in the I form have, of a house twink. I have a house twink as my sidekick. <laughs> I, amazing. I did not know Brendan before Isn't this. he brilliant? Have you watched any of his videos? No. I should you have. must. I have uh, my a guy who's on the show, Brendan Scannell is his name. And you can follow him at, I think, at bscan. Uh, he is so. I've just been obsessed with him forever. Oh. I went since I saw his videos and uh, begged him to do this. Oh, but he's, he's now I know he's like, but he's like kind of blowing up as a as an actor and comedian. Mm -hmm. Because so of your show. Well, no, as his own because he's like he was a really good type and he's really yeah. a good actor mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I know he's like up for something big and like now I'm panicked because what am I gonna do? <laughs> like, and he, go get I'm, gonna have, I, I'm gonna lose have my, to have my, an audition my house for the house twink. Twink. <laughs> I know, but he's just so good at it. It would be really depressing to lose it, him. He's amazing. Uh, he's but great. you can make it like a game in the backyard, an audition. That's so true. Yes. That, well, that's yeah. something I would finding. greatly enjoy. Finding, finding, finding Friends the, House Twink. Friends <laughs> House Twink. I would watch that. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think we all would. I think Cocky Boys already produced that series. Probably, they probably did. But I know your version it would be completely different. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Who's <laughs> to say? Who knows to say? Who knows what those tests could uh, consist of? Yeah. Uh, but it's really fun. Uh, thank you for plugging it. I'm, yeah, I, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I actually stumbled upon. I, I don't even know how. I think it came up just like in my news feed, and I was like, "Oh, who's this guy?" And then like I was tickled pink because like the signs came up, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, whoever is doing this, I absolutely love okay. it." Well, it I know so I fun. came up in your news feed is because I'm buying suggested posts. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the the that works. That yeah. works. I was like, who is this guy? Am I his friend? I'm glad, but I'm glad to hear that the suggestion posts are working. Yes, it is working. You must have working. liked one of the things that I said to make it go to people's timelines. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Facebook is uh, nice to, to whore yourself out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so what else is going on? You, I know you're on hiatus now, but are you returning to scream you're doing scream well i don't know i hosted an after show the after show now here at the after show network yeah. i hosted uh an after show on mtv for scream called scream mm -hmm. after dark last year which was so fun and uh i don't know if, if screams they don't know if it's coming back yet so i don't know if i'll come back um and then uh i have a i'm on i'm on a acting on a show that comes out on tbs in november called search party that's really 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 Ooh, nice. fun. It's fun. It's it looks really, great it's really good yeah uh, and that's created by Sarah Vial Bliss and Charles Rogers, who are really great. And, uh, and is it um, the girl who played Maybe? Yes, yes. Alia Shotgun. Yes. Uh, Shot oh, yeah. love her. She's great. And uh, John Early, do you know yeah, John yeah, Early? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and I play boyfriends. That's amazing. And 
uh, who else is on it? Who the, John Reynolds. I don't know. I'm not going to name the whole cast. <laughs> I, in the in the second episode, um, Rosie Perez throws a cheese plate at me. Oh my oh. god! Oh. Spoiler alert. So, so yeah, that's pretty. Cool. So you have oh, to tune yeah. in for that. Yeah. It's November. Is it November twenty first? I think. And if it they're, is, they're, I don't know why I know that. I, yeah, I don't know. But they're they're doing. Uh, TBS is putting them all out like as a marathon, like as oh. a binge thing, oh. mm-hmm. so people can binge it the week of Thanksgiving. Is oh, that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. No one's really done that yet. So that's awesome. TBS did it with. Dear by Angie. Tribeca, Andrew Tribeca, yes. and it was a very smart move because yes. I watched the entire thing. It did well that show. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. I wonder if they're trying to keep up with like streams. Like, yeah, like it's Netflix smart, and yeah. stuff. Um, and uh, but no, Search Party. It's really, really great. It's really, really fun. And drag is Drag Tween Teen the last book you did? Yes. And so then I wrote a book that came out in April uh, called Drag Teen, which is a young adult novel about a teenage drag queen mm-hmm. uh, that you can buy anywhere books are sold or on Audible.com, read by me. Yeah. And uh, and I have another book with the same company, Scholastic, coming out in the fall of 2017. But I don't know the name of it yet because I can't decide on a title. What is it? <laughs> is that going to be? Uh, these are all uh, fiction, right? Yeah, that you put out these so are fiction. Th- yeah. That's fiction, and this this one's fiction. Um, and uh, I have no idea what I'm going to call it because I think Drag Teen's the best title. That <laughs> yeah, could ever yeah, it's come phenomenal. Yeah. You can't get much yeah. better than that, but you'll think of something. Yeah, and then the Drag Teen book, someone just I think I'm allowed to say this, just optioned to make into a musical. Wow. Oh, cool. a really exciting person. That's awesome. So that is truly. I, I mean, I that's a dream, that part, is it not? But yeah, it's like literally my dream. And so we'll see. Well, you get to be. Well, you're probably older than the character. Oh, I would be in it. Yeah. Um, but I, I get to write. I, I write on it. I Great. It's yeah. amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you oh. have no shortage of drag queens yes. to choose from. <laughs> I know. <laughs> who are, who are you all for on, on Drag Race? I'm oh. Alaska, and I'm, it makes me nervous the hate she's been getting what? in the past week. She's been getting hate? Because she voted. I guess people really like Tatiana now. And yeah, oh, Lawrence right. in the chat will not stop talking. Hashtag Team Tatiana. Oh. Well, yeah. I'm a big Alyssa Edwards fan. Oh, I'm, yes, I love Alyssa. I Alyssa's am a diehard Alyssa Edwards yeah. fan. Yeah. I think she's a genuine star. Like, up there with like Debbie Reynolds, yeah. kind of. Like, I, I listen yeah. in Alaska. Be- previous to All Stars, are were my favorite drag race queens, still are, and I'm excited to see. Yeah, how it goes I forward. mean, I, I'm I'm all Team Alaska too. I think this uh, All Stars, she's doing like really well. That's why she's getting hate. Yeah, which is mm-hmm. weird. but I, but I also think that after the experience on Drag Race, I think they they've all just kind of come into their own. Yeah, now. they go out, and they perform. Exactly. And yeah, they and, and yes. now they've come into this like I know who I am, right? You know, at, at this moment in time, and I'm just gonna come on the show and just have fun, you know, and not worry yeah. about all the other stuff that comes with, like, reality TV. Totally. And they're also more, like, going back to what we were talking about earlier, prepared for, yes. I would think, the what comes with reality television. Well, Fifi right. was Except for Fifi. <laughs> Fifi was oh, not. Oh, right. We're yeah. running out of time. I could literally talk about that for <laughs> yeah. two straight hours because I think it's wild. But we have to wrap up. So you said you were Alyssa, though, right? Team Alyssa. Uh, Team Alyssa. Great. Team Alyssa. <laughs> Alyssa. All right. Well, you'll have to come back when... When Alyssa is crowned right. the winner of All-Stars. Queen of so, Queens. Well, not in two weeks, but I was going to say when the musical, when you know more about the musical. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but definitely when Alyssa yes. takes it off. When, when Alyssa takes over the world, yes. It, exactly. All right, well, guys, thank you so much for tuning into our inaugural episode. Thank you for finding out it was that. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on the inaugural episode. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you for being here. So good talking to you. Yes. Uh, Tune in next time. Don't forget to send us your questions. Hashtag AskGWR. I'm Adam Salandra. You can find me at Adam Salandra. And, of course, I am still Tony Moore. <laughs> and you can find me on all social media platforms at Lounge with Tony or my website, loungewithtony.com. I'm Yael Teagle. You can find me everywhere at Yael Teagle. That's Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. I have a podcast. It's called Intimate Interrogations. Ooh. Sometimes it is filthy. Sometimes it is not. It's on iTunes. Check it out for free. <laughs> I have a feeling it's always filthy. <laughs> it's not always. That's how you sell it. Lies. You know. Not and always. I am Blake McIver, and you can find me across the social medias at Blake McIver or my website, BlakeMcIverOfficial.com. And where can we find you, Jeffrey? Everywhere on the medias, uh, at Jeffrey Self, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y, E-R-Y. Self. Self is self. Love it. So. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you Jeffrey. all. See you Thanks next time. Bye. Bye. Yay. Bye. I feel like this is my fourth. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.